Hi guys. Today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, which is how to write an A assignment. Now, even though many of my examples or maybe most of my examples will come from my interpersonal communication course, this video is for anyone in college or university who has to write an essay and it's for anyone who wants to get an A. Now guys, this is ideal and this is what every college professor or teaching assistant or instructor wants, but you have to decide of course on where you are in terms of skill level and how much time you have to commit to this because getting an A will require quite a lot of work. I'm gonna be honest with you, it does require a lot of work. So I'm gonna tell you what is required and you decide on what you think works best for you given your time, your energy and your resources. So let's have a look at what it takes to write an A assignment. Now, the first thing you want to keep in mind is that writing is a form of communication. Now, when we talk about communication, we have to talk about the transactional model. We have a sender and we have a receiver. In this case, the student writing the paper is the sender and the receiver is the person who will read and mark the paper. Your job as the sender is to ensure that you write your message as clearly as you can. Therefore, in order to write a clear message, you want to ensure that when you encode the message, you do it with as much deliberate intention as you can. And you want to make sure that your thoughts are as clear as they need to be so that when the receiver the marker, the instructor, the professor, when the marker decodes your message, they can say, hmm, this is it. You got it. Your aim is to show them that you understand what is being asked and you have the key to making sure that the message is clear. The key to writing any essay assignment is first recognizing for you to be a successful writer, you have to take your writing through three stages. The first stage is the planning stage, which is actually the most important stage in writing. Then the second stage is actual writing the essay. And then the third stage is revising the essay. Do not attempt to write your essay before you plan because planning is the key to a good essay. I know sometimes we get excited and we just want to jump in and we just want to start writing, but no, we want to first make sure that we plan the message. So let's talk first about the planning stage, which involves a few steps. It involves analyzing the question, gathering the information, selecting the information, and then organizing the information. That's just stage one. You're not yet writing. You're just planning. So let's talk about the steps involved in planning. The first step in planning is reading the assignment instructions very carefully so that you know what is being asked of you. So you want to pull up the assignment. If you have a handout or if it's online, maybe on Blackboard or somewhere else on a learning management system, and you want to either write the assignment again, or you just want to copy and paste it from elsewhere so that you can highlight the important words because you want to be very sure about what you are being asked to do. Are you being asked to analyze, to evaluate, 
to describe, to show, to demonstrate. Make sure that the verb is clear to you so that you do what you're asked to do. Once you're sure about what you're being asked to do, you want to be sure of the content that your instructor is expecting. Are you being tested on your knowledge or on your skills or on your attitudes? Whatever it is, be very clear. And the only way you can get that clarity is from reading the assignment, not once and not even twice, but you want to read it until you kind of embody it and you know for certain what they're asking you for. So you want to be very clear because the analysis is important. Now, once you've passed that first stage in the planning where you're analyzing the actual question, the next thing you want to do is identify the relevant chapters in the textbook or articles or handouts that you will need to assist you. Now, I know this sounds like a given, but some people don't do it. So grab them, get them, find them wherever they are, bring them in front of you because you cannot write your assignment without consulting the notes. Many people, the textbook part is easy. The handout parts, that's easy. But then when it, gets, when it comes to the articles, they say, mm, where am I gonna find articles? Believe me guys, most textbooks make that easy now. If you look at the end of most chapters in textbooks, you will find end notes or some books have the reference list at the end. So you don't even have to try to think of where to find the articles because most chapters have tons of additional references. So as you read through the chapter, see which references resonate with you, see which ones seem to say what you want to say and make a note of them because those are the ones that you want to use in your assignment. So this is the part of the planning stage where you are gathering information. First, you analyze the question, then you gather the information. And as you gather the information, remember this is academia, which means whatever you write cannot just be coming from your brain only. Even if you're being asked about your communication skills. Yes, we want to hear about your communication skills, but whatever you write must be grounded in theory because it's not about your thoughts. It's about the theory of interpersonal communication, the theory of anthropology, whatever it is you're being asked about. It's not about your thoughts only. You love your thoughts, but that's not enough to write an academic paper. Even if the course seems to be a practical kind of course, Remember, it's not self-help, but it's self-help, the parameters are broad. But even if it feels like a little bit of self-help, the point is that it's academic and you're never expected to just regurgitate what's in the textbook. So that's why you need outside sources. And as you write, we expect you to use the key terms which are in the textbook. Key terms are not natural in our minds. So you have to look at the textbook, see the key terms and use them. As you analyze the question or the assignment, if there's a word that you don't understand, Google the word. Because if you don't know what the word means and you write the assignment based on, I think it means this, or I hope it means this, chances are, you're going to lower the potential, your potential grade. So always Google any word that you don't understand. I know some of you are saying, duh, we know that. Not everybody knows that. That's why I'm saying it. Trust me. Now, you've gathered some amount of information, but you haven't finished gathering information yet. Because after you've examined 
the assignment guidelines, after you've gathered the material that you're going to use, the next step, which is very important, is when you look at your rubric. Do not begin writing until you've read the rubric because the rubric is going to tell you what is important so that you know how you will be graded. Now, once you've looked at your rubric and you know what you're being asked to do, now you're ready to go to the next stage of the planning. We're still planning here, but you're ready to now take notes based on the information that you need to answer the question. Now, you may be old school like me and you want to do everything by hand. I still prefer that way, you know? I want to jot it all down. I want to be able to move things to the left, to the right, to cross out, and that gives me great pleasure. But you may say, nah, that's not my approach. I wanna have it all typed up. And sometimes that's good because once you already have the information there, when it comes to writing, a lot of times you can just cut and paste and move things around easily. So depending on the approach that works for you, you want to select the information, whether the old school way or the modern way. Now, once you've selected the information that you need, it's time to organize your information and you especially want to focus on how you want to arrange the body in terms of the alphanumeric structure. Now, I won't talk about that now because I have another video where I went into detail and I showed you an example of an alphanumeric structure. So if you want, you can look at that video. Once you have created your alphanumeric outline, you've now completed the first stage of writing your essay. I know that's just the first stage, but I'm telling you what to do to write an A paper. That's what it takes. So let's now talk about the writing stage, which begins with you first being aware that an essay must have three parts. You must have an introduction, you must have a body, and you must have a conclusion. Now, any quick search on Google will show you many examples of the visual representation of an essay. And even though there are slight differences in each person's visual representation, one thing for sure is that all essays have the three parts, the introduction, the body, and the conclusion. All essay introductions, begin with an attention grabber or a hook. Then there's some general information that helps to give background information about whatever it is you plan to talk about. And the third part of the introduction, which is the last sentence or the last part of the introduction, that's where you have your thesis statement. You cannot write an essay without a thesis statement. If you don't know what a thesis statement is, you can get many examples once again online. I have a few videos which I will link here where I talk about the thesis statement. If that's not enough, then there's always a Purdue Writing Center, which I always recommend to my students. And if you're at my college, you can always go to the Learning Center. Most colleges have a writing center or a kind of learning center. Now, in addition to having your introduction, which will be well-developed, you are expected to have a well-developed body with several paragraphs. Each paragraph must be about one thing or each paragraph must have a topic sentence. In addition to writing the topic sentence, you want to ensure that what you write after the topic sentence supports the topic sentence fully. And that is where you're going to add your examples, all the information you have, the outside sources. And when you're done with your paragraph, you have a concluding sentence for that paragraph. Then you move on to the next paragraph. Begin with a topic sentence again, 
add the supporting information, then end with a concluding sentence. And you do that until you get to your conclusion. So make sure that your essay has three distinct parts, the introduction, the body, and the conclusion. Also, make sure it's word processed, double spaced, with the usual margins. Nothing too small, nothing so wide that we don't see a margin, okay? Now, when you're writing your essay, please ensure also that if the essay has two parts, you don't merge and summarize everything in one. Every part of the assignment question must be answered separately. So if you're in my 1216 class, you will notice that for assignment one, there are two parts. The first part is an essay. The second part is where you're going to write your goals. Those goals should not be a part of the essay. That's a separate section where you'll have headings and subheadings to show the difference between the essay and part two. And as you write, Keep looking back at the rubric because you want to be sure that you're on track. It's very easy to start writing and forget what you're supposed to be keeping in mind. So as you write, keep looking back at the rubric to ensure that you are meeting the expectations and keep looking back at the question to make sure that you're actually answering the question. Every now and again, I get essays and they're six pages long and nothing in the six pages answers the actual question that was asked. And when it happens, I realize that the person got so caught up because sometimes it's, you know, a very personal essay. People are talking about the things that have affected them, but they sometimes forget that it's not a journal entry. It's an academic essay. So please keep that in mind and make sure that as you write, all your examples are clear and specific. You want to be as specific as you can be. So rather than saying something like, I was polite, and you can say, I was polite, but you want to explain to the reader what you mean. I was polite, I made eye contact, I listened, I stopped speaking when the person was speaking, I listened, I leaned forward. You want to be as clear as you can be so that the marker knows what it is you mean because it's very easy to not be sure about what you really mean to say. And when you've finished all your writing, you're ready for stage three of the writing process, which is the revising stage. Now, all good writing is subject to revision because that's when you're now going to look back again at the question and the rubric to see if you met the requirements. Now is the time for you to cut out the things which you think, ah, this is nice to have, but it's not really a part of the question and it doesn't necessarily support the question. This is when you say, whoops, I have 3000 words here and Tanya only asked me for 1500. What will I cut? Now is the time to cut. Because most times when you write too much, you lower your grade because you've taken away from the emphasis in the essay. Okay? Yeah. In addition to that, now is the time to proofread for all those grammar mistakes, all those style mistakes, because those things affect your grade. Because it's a part of the communication process. If your sentence structure is awkward, then it means that your marker or the TA or the professor has to read it a second or a third or a fourth time to quite understand what you're saying. If they have to read it that many times, that will affect your grade. So now is the time. If you wish, get some help. Ask a friend who may be a little bit better and say, what do you think about this sentence? Does this sound awkward? And here's a very important tip. Make sure that your sentences are not more than 20 words long. Sometimes I get sentences which have 40, 50, 60 words. 
that's too many because more than likely your thoughts are jumbled so 20 words or less per sentence now once you've done all of that and you've done your proofreading put down the essay because you need to revisit it one more time which means you cannot do this the night before the assignment is due you need to start at least seven days before the assignment is due so you can do a little then do a little bit more and then do a little bit more and then you are going to be ready but when you have finished put it down because you've been working on it for a while and after a time your judgment becomes a little blurred so put it down take a walk take a nap do something else and then come back with a new fresh pair of eyes and read it through and make sure it says everything that you want it to say. And when you are satisfied, you are ready to press submit. Now, if you do all of that, I promise you, you'll be happy with your grade. Students who work through that process are rarely disappointed. But many times, students who don't do this process are disappointed because the grade reflects the effort that they put into writing the assignment. So I hope this helps. And I hope that going forward, you will always use these principles for writing any essay, because that is what it takes to write a well-developed essay. So hope that helps. And until I see you in the next video, bye for now.